Hey guys, we got another volume build for you. This one behind me is 75 foot in diameter. It is almost a perfect circle. So let's take a look at how we built it. So let's check out the inside of the volume. So these are all Pangea panels. Each panel is 2.3 pixel pitch. That means each LED, and these are micro LED, are 2.3 millimeters away from each other. So that's how dense the LEDs are. Now we have 136 columns in here. That's all the way around. That's 75 feet in diameter. That means I could throw a baseball to someone over there, not that I would in a volume like this. One of the cons of doing a full sphere, especially with the ceiling, is the audio. Now, right now, it's pretty bad. As I get closer to the middle, you can start to see how bad the echo actually is. And we use words like mitigate. We are trying to mitigate the audio. There is no real solution for this. It's really bad. So I'm gonna go back over to the perimeter where it's a little bit easier to record audio we will have solutions like helium balloons because the sound does not bounce back because the helium is less dense inside the balloons. These are just some of the solutions we're gonna use in the volume in order to solve the audio. In order to set up this wall, we needed to use 11 Brompton processors. Now, we have both Brompton and Novastar. If you've seen some of my other videos on how to set up walls, you see that I like to use Novastar, specifically the MX40s. We have some older junior UHD processors here from Novastar, and that is for the ceiling. So four of them to run the ceiling and 11 Bromptons to run the wall. Now, every Brompton, we would have to run a crap ton of ethernets to get all the signal over to our processors. So Bromptons have something called an XD. This is like a breakout box for the processor. We run one fiber from the Brompton to the XD, and then we get 10 ethernet ports to go from the XD into the panels on the back of the wall. Every Brompton gets two XDs. So each processor has two breakouts, and that lets us do the whole wall. That's interesting. All right, and this is what happens when Unreal Engine actually crashes on you while you're There's talking no. because one of the computers decided to do an update Unreal decided, nope, we're not gonna function and everything's gonna go back to their normal screensavers. We're gonna go back and fix this and then keep going. So over here on the side, we have some of our workstations. This one is what we call a brain bar. It is sending a signal all the way over there to the racks. And this is where we launch it. So you can see all the different nodes on this screen. We launch it from here and then we wait probably, what, 20 seconds? and it ends up over here on the wall. You can see we're full black, it's all loading in the background. Okay, so the wall is up. This is what it looks like. We have our ceiling, everything's connected, it brightened up. And you can see there the blue outline, that's actually what the camera would be seeing if we had a camera here. And that blue box moves around and inside that blue box is a very high quality image. This way, all the nodes are only processing at a very high rate what's in that box and everything else is at a lesser resolution. And along with being really, really wide, it's also really tall. So this wall is about 21 feet tall. It is 13 individual panels all the way up and of course it wraps all the way around. So along with the wall is also the lighting. So we have 29 lights, 30 total were bought and one we use as a backup, but 29 Fresnels, they're RGB and then they have amber, lime and scion in them. 
This gives us really good control of how we want to light our set. If they were moving headlights, that'd be even more control, but that is also more expensive. We went with a wash light that can also zoom and become a spot. Just like in my other video where I talk about lighting, we use these exact same lights to create things like sunsets, golden hour. If we need the sun and create shadows to cast on the floor, these lights are really good for that. These are the Verismo Fresnels made by Blizzard, and we really like them. So coming out of the volume and the gap is just large enough to have a truck drive in if we have those types of things on set. Over on this side, and yes, we are building sets for some movies coming up that I can't really talk about, but over there we have stations for directors and other people for the movie who need their stations. And over here is more of the in-house setups. So we have two brain bars, which can both control an Unreal Engine environment, as well as some other stations that we'll be putting on more tables here. We are in the middle of the build, probably about 80% of the way through. Just wanted to give you guys a sneak peek. So you can see the trussing that we have here. We probably have at least 12, maybe 14 of these spread around the volume. These are holding up the wall. One of the things we did very differently with this build versus some of our other builds is we need to get the panels as close to ground level as possible. So we had some custom made metal brackets for this wall to keep it very close to the ground. This meant we didn't have leveling feet. So that took us a lot of time during the build to perfectly level everything. We were literally scraping into the floor to get panels perfectly level just because the floor had some high spots and some low spots. So we used 12 inch trussing for our supports on the back of the wall. And then we actually have 20 inch trussing up in the ceiling to support that with 26 one ton motors to hold up the whole ceiling, which does move up and down. So what you see here on the wall is one of these XDs. This one is A and this one back here is B. On the back of the XDs, we have 10 ports each and you can see how we have these blue cables running into the panels. So the way we wired this wall, given that we wanted to be able to achieve uh, 60 frames per second at 10 bit color, okay? So a 10 bit color depth meant we have to push more data to every panel and at 60 frames, we can't max out an entire column into a single port like we would like to. So what we did is we started at panel five up here, which is still within arm's reach. And we have a blue cable going into that and that goes all the way up. This way we don't have to get on ladders in order to troubleshoot and rewire the wall when we need to. Then we did a zigzag approach. So going four up and over and four down, every single port is getting somewhere between eight to 10 panels. That just depends on how many ports were available, how we split up the Bromptons, but every Brompton gets two XDs and the range is about 13 panels wide and 13 panels tall per Brompton. This also gives us very even numbers going in for our nodes. So every Brompton gets a computer plugged into it. All these computers have the exact same resolution going in for the wall when we set up Unreal Engine and create our mesh. This makes life very easy that things are matching and we don't have to have custom resolutions for every single node. That does not play well when you start setting up end display and needing everything to work in sync. So right behind the wall, we have all of the servers. So this rack here houses the brains for absolutely everything. We have our Nova stars. These are the processors for the ceiling. Our Bromptons, these are the processors for the wall. Then we have 11 nodes just for the Bromptons. 11 Bromptons, 11 nodes. We have a 12th node down here that powers the entire ceiling. The ceiling, we do not need to be at such a high frame rate. We don't need as much color depth in it and things like that, even though we still are doing 10 bit. So we can run all four Nova stars off of a single computer and that's okay. We're actually sending the same very weird resolution of 35, 36 by 3120 to all the Nova stars. And then in the Nova stars, we're actually just looking at a specific quadrant of that image and sending that up to the ceiling. The Nova stars have ethernet. See all this blue cable coming out the back? That is an individual ethernet for about eight to nine panels per port. Each one of these guys has at least 14 or 13 ports being used in the back, 
13, 14 cables times four have to get all the way up to the ceiling. And then of course we need enough slack for that ceiling to drop down without all the cables getting yanked out. All the colorful cables here, those teal and yellow and black cables, those are all fiber. Those are for the Bromptons going over to the XDs. And finally, you see two more computers up here. It's for our camera tracking. We are using a very expensive system called OptiTrack. And yes, you still need to put a sensor on the camera, but then we get a very, very large range. Uh, it's a really expensive system, but it works really well once it's zeroed in. One of the pros about it, it's a completely wireless system. So you are not tethered by a cable. You don't have to put sensors and little dots all over the ceiling, but you do have to spread around a bunch of cameras. So I think we put about 40 plus OptiTrack cameras around the perimeter of the wall just to track a camera and a couple objects. That's a lot, but it's a very high-end system. Right underneath that, we have our lighting, and yes, we are using Mad Mapper for lights. One of my favorite things about Mad Mapper for lighting is not only the ability to take in that NDI feed, as you've seen in the other videos, but the fact that it's just so simple to just change lights. We can turn everything off, we can zoom things in. Uh, it's definitely optimized to be a touchscreen if we had a touchscreen here but I can easily remote into that computer on an iPad or something like that and be in the volume controlling my lighting. Four or $500 for a seat is a lot better than a Grand MA. We still have a Grand MA spec for this, but to get the lighting up and to get some of our shots already done, we stood up Mad Mapper to solve our short-term problem. So with all of this, it is a lot of data and processing power but it's also a lot of actual power to run this whole place. So with the power, one of the things we had to do in our last volume is run cables across the floor. We made sure in this one to run all the cables up and over. This is so we can get things like our scissor lifts through without having to go over cable ramps and, and have problems and be able to wheel sets around and things like that. So all of our feeders actually going up and over to our distros. Now, we have at least, let's see, four, six, seven, eight, nine distros to power the wall and the ceiling, and then another distro to power all the server racks. That is 10 distros total. When I actually measured how much power everything was sucking up, we were looking at about 900 amps to power the entire wall and the processors. But of course, that was that absolute full brightness with all of the lights, everything at full white, doing a full stress test on the system, about 900 amps. That's a lot, but in this building, we actually have plenty of power. So each one of these boxes around, and yes, we are going all the way up to the ceiling to grab power as well. Each of these boxes on the wall is capable of providing 400 amps per leg. So if we look over here, this is just an extra box we're not using. Each one of these, the red, the black, and the blue, each provides 400 amps. So we spread out our power so we are good to go. Every distro over here is paired. So each one of these, we are jumping off of this one into this one, is going up and over and into one of these boxes. We have a pair here, a pair here, and as we go down the wall, we have more pairs. In order to get the ceiling to raise up and down, we come over here. So this box, you flip these switches once you turn them on, and when you hit run, it will either move up or down. If we need to move one motor, we'd make sure all these switches are in their middle position and then flip the switch either up or down for that motor. And yes, we have some paper here to remember where we put all the motors in the ceiling as there are a lot, including some pick points because this cable going up to the ceiling is extremely heavy. So in order to get this up and over the wall, we used a separate motor just to pick up the cable. When you're dealing with things this large, it gets really heavy and unmanageable for one person, so you start using the tech, hardware, and other people to help you get everything where you need to go. So that is the full tour, guys. Uh, when you have this many screens around you, it starts to get really hot in here, especially when you turn up the brightness, so just know that if you do start building volumes like this. If you guys have questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Let me know what you guys like and don't like in these videos. If you're trying to build a volume and need some help, feel free to reach out. I'm sure we can help you guys out. And with that, thanks for watching.